do you want to learn how to build your website would you like to make an amazing website and bring your idea to life if your answer is yes this is where you need to start hello there everyone congratulations in this project video i'm gonna show you exactly how you can create a complete fully responsible multi-paid educational LMS website using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript from scratch. The best part is this website is fully responsible for any device. So, if you want to learn HTML, CSS, and JavaScript from scratch, then this project video is for you. In this first video, we are going to create the homepage of this multi-page responsible educational website. In the next consecutive videos, we are going to create the blog page, the blog details page, the course page, the course details page, the contact page, as well as an about us page of this responsible multi-page educational website. At the end, we are going to deploy this website on the internet. So, if this sound is interesting, what are you waiting for? Sit on your comfort zone, take a cup of coffee, and then enjoy the show. Alright, we have just linked some CDL link as well as jQuery CDL link right here. Now, let me change the title of the project. Multi-page responsive educational website template design right here. Now open it inside live server right here. All right. Now here we have the MPT web page right here. Here we have now the web page is empty right here. Now first we are going to create the navigation bar right here. So to do this, we are going to create a header element having an ID value. Let me say. Inside this header element, we are going to nest another div element, have a div element having a class name navbar. Inside this navbar, we have logo on the left side and we have navigation menu on the right side. So here we have the logo which is nested inside the h1 element right here, smart pitch, and then now we are going to create the right side navigation menu so to do this we have an order list having class name let me say menu items inside this an order list we are going to list out different links which is nested inside list items right here and we have an anchor element right here so so here we have right all right, the first navigation menu from here is home and then pages and then category and then become a teacher. After that, login navigation menu. So when I save and refresh the web page, here we have, right? Here we have the logo right here, and here we have the navigation link right here. Now, this is the HTML part. All right, as you can see here, we have just added the global styling right here. So, to style this navigation menu, first we are going to add a comment right here. So, using this class selector navbar, let me add some property value pair. Position, fixed, then top, zero, left, also zero. Then, we are going to use flex right here. So, display flex. Align items, center, justify content, space between. 
now by default the flex direction is row set to row right then with 100 percent after that when i save and refresh here we have the logo on the left side and here we have the navigation menu on the right side so over here we are going to add some padding right here so padding from top and bottom let me say this 8 pixel and from left and right 7 percent now when i save and refresh here we have after that now let me add a shadow color right here so 0 pixel 0 pixel 10 pixel and 0 pixel having a shadow color right here secondary it's better to use this main color right here we have the color wire right here we have main color right here so we have just used it this color when i save and refresh here we have a shadow color right here now using this class selector logo let me style the logo of the website right here so logo now bar and descendant selector right here logo and then we are going to target the each one in the message selector right here so color we use this color right here secondary text color and then again we are going to target this span the text which is found inside the span element so copy this and paste right here and then span after that now let me change the color for this we use it's better to use red as you can see here here we have the logo for this educational website right now let me start this first we are going to remove this bullet point To remove this bullet point, we are going to use this menu items class selector. Then list style none. So when I save and refresh, then the bullet point is already gone since we use list style none, right? After that, now let me target this li in the selector. So copy this and paste right here in order to align these list items on the same row. We are going to use display inline block. and tape and refresh here we have now let me add some padding padding from top and bottom 0.4 rim and left and right one rim which is the global font size 0.4 times the global font size in my case the global font size is 60 pixel that we have just already created inside the body and the element the body element selector so here we have we use text transform capitalize after that copy this and then paste right here now we are going to target the anchor element right here so here we have a link tag right here which is the anchor element now let me add some property value pair
for this font size let me say 1.2 rim which is 1.5 is the global font size in my case 60 pixel that we have just seen inside the body and the HTML tag right here so text decoration none after that when I save and refresh here we have all right now let me change the text color right here color we use this beige color right here and then after that when I save and refresh here we have the same color just like that of the background color now what we are going to do is we are going to set the background for this navigation bar. So, background color, we are going to use this black color, which is the hexadecimal color code of the black color right here. So, here we have. All right. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to add hover over effect over this navigation menu. So to do this, copy this and paste right here. And now, over here, we are going to use a zero class selector right here, which is hover. Now change the text color while hovering the mouse. And then we are going to change border bottom two pixel solid have been this color right here secondary text color after that when I save and refresh yep. alright we have just made a mistake right here instead of border over here it should be border bottom alright that's it after that when I save and refresh Nothing will happen. What? Over here, we are going to make a smooth transition while hovering. So transition 0 0.5 second is. After that, over here, cursor pointer. So when I save and refresh, here we have, right? Oh, yeah. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to add a drop down menu over this page and this category navigation menu. So, to do this, here we have the page navigation menu, navigation link right here. And over here again, we need one more navigation menu first, categories. We have categories, we have just, we have just forgot it. So, categories. When I save and refresh, here we have. Now, we are going to add a drop down menu. First, we are going to add this HTML Unicode right here and then separated by semicolon right here, not comma. So when I save and refresh, here we have this icons right here. Here we have the icon right here. Oh yeah. So copy this first, copy this and then come over here inside the headlight tag for the page navigation menu and paste right here. You see? And remove these menu items and replace by drop down menu. Now change this home by courses and change these page 
by about us navigation menu and again change this category is by blog navigation menu and then change this become a teacher by shop navigation menu and also change this login by become a teacher navigation menu right here after that we need more items more navigation link so copy this and then paste right here contact us after that when i save and refresh here we have it's boring right oh yeah as you can see here here we have the navigation menus right here so now over here what we are going to do is we are going to use this class selector drop down menu and add some property value pair so position then absolute background we use the same background color right here dark when I save and refresh here we have all right then copy this and then paste right here after that, now we are going to target this LI11 selector. We use for this, we use 200 pixel. Refresh again, here is it. All right. After that, using this header element, let me use position related. So over here, what we are going to do is, for the drop down menu, we are going to set display block. And refresh again, nothing is changed, right? Wait a minute and I will show you how. And then remove it. It's not necessary. And come over here and set display block. Again, nothing is changed. Over here, copy this. Cut out this and come over here and paste right here. And now, over here, we are going to set position related, right? So here we have, oh yeah, this is. The major aim is when I click this page navigation menu, the other drop down menu should display. So to do this, instead of saying display block, we are going to say display none. You see, here we have. So when I click this page navigation menu, it displays the drop down menu. So to do this, first copy this and then press right here and add a pseudo class selector, in my case, hover. And over here we have drop down menu class selector so when i hover over this navigation menu then the drop down menu should display and over here we are going to add a smooth transition 0 0.5 second is in is instead of is in we are going to say is 
So when I save and refresh, here we have nothing is changing. Why? Let me tell you why. So, as you can see here, first remove this, it's not necessary. Remove this. And we are going to add this display none over here, not on the list item, right? So here we have, right? It's good. Now over here we are going to add padding bottom. We need more space. So padding bottom 25 pixels. After that, when I save and refresh, here we have. All right, now remove this, it's not necessary, over here, and instead of padding bottom, we are going to say padding top 25 pixel. so here we have. All right. Now we are going to add this navigation drop-down menu when we hover this category. So over here, I'm not going to waste your time, right? So simply copy this and then come over here inside the NI element selector and paste right here. Save and refresh. Here we have. All right. That's working, right? So from here, I'm not going to waste your time. I simply add it offline, right? Welcome back. Here we have. All right, here we have, right? So when I save and refresh the web page, here is it. All right, now over here, what we are going to do is, we are going to add Transition 0 0.5 second is over here. And refresh again. Over here, we need more space. You see, we need more space right here. So it's better to decrease the phone size to one rim. You see, here we have. Oh yeah, here is it. Over here, we need some space. So padding both them. Then let me say 50 pixels. Oh yeah, everyone, congratulations. We have just finished this navigation menu having a beautiful hover over effect with a drop down menu so now we are going to create this home page header right here as you can see here when i click over here it scrolls it is mobile touch slider so we are going to make this using sweeper jazz. You see, it's beautiful, right? Here we have another page right here. All right, so to create this first, let me write a comment over here. So here is it. So over here, what we are going to do is we are going to create a section element right here. Inside this section element, we need to have a div element right here. Inside this div element, 
we are going to create another table element have a class name let me say hero container inside this we are going to nest a background image right here so here we have the source attribute the value for the source attribute is the image path right here so asset inside the asset folder we have an image folder inside this image folder we have the image right here and again down here we are going to create a div element having a class name let me say content box inside this we need to have an h3 element right here and again we are going to create a div element having a class name let me say animated hero text inside this we need to have an h1 element right here Again, outside of this, we are going to create another div element have a class name, let me say, discount announcement. And inside this, we need to create a span element right here. After that, we are going to create a div element have a class name template btn for the call to action button right here. So as you can see here, here is the demo website. So now I'm not going to waste your time. It is better to add it offline, right? Oh yeah, welcome back. Here we have. After that, when I save and refresh the web page, here is it, right? Now, let me change the background image. All right, here we have. Here is the text right here, and here is the image right here. Now, this is the HTML part. Using this class selector, let me add some property value pair. So, first and foremost, let me add a comment over here. Hero container, then we are going to target the image right here, the image width, let me say 100%, height 100, viewport height, and object fit cover. After that, when I save and refresh, here is it, right? The image is fully covered right here. Oh, yeah. Now, let me target this content right here in order to style the content which, which is found inside the TV element have a class name content box. So for this position, absolute, and then top, let me say top, Can rim and left five rim. After that, when I save and refresh, here we have right. So from here, the parent element is right here. Here, continue. So for this. This is the parent element, so the position should be relative, right? That's why here is it, right? All right. After that, now let me style this and it's element right here. Using descendant selector. So for this font size 1.5 rim, which is 1.5 times the global font size, which is 60 pixel. Color for this text, white, font weight, let me say bond, and then line height, let me say 2.5 rim. 
after that when i save and refresh here we have right now over here we need to have the index so the index 100 right yeah after that now let me style this text which surrounded inside the span element so to do this copy this and paste right here and then span after that now let me change the color right here the font color for this text let me say secondary text color yeah it's better to use this color after that when i see here we have the base lms wordpress team now let me style this text which is found inside this animated hero text after that so for this with for read and now let me target this h1 so to do this copy this and paste right here and and now we have an h1 element selector for this h1 font size let me say 2.5 rim so when i save and refresh here we have the text right here now let me add another property right here for this color we use this color right here after that when i save and refresh here we have over here we are going to add padding bottom we need more space right here this is and then over here web kit text stroke we are going to make this text having a stroke right so for this web kit text stroke then one pixel white and then color for this transparent for this here we have right here we have a text having a stroke right here then background image having linear gradients then white and white after that we are going to add background we are going to add wave kit background clip then text after that when i save and refresh here is it right now over here we are going to add background repeat no repeat and background position the background size for the background position zero zero after that when i save and refresh the same right so now what we are going to do is we are going to make animation for this text you see we are going to make this text out of typing text right here so to do this over here we have animation and then we have animation name right here and then to second having linear infinite animation duration infinite so to make animation we are going to use key frame rules over here first we are going to add a comment right here website animation so add keyframes then over here we have identifier for this identifier the value we need the animation name which is home animation in my case which is home animation right so for this at zero percent at 20 percent and at 100 percent we are going to make this animation this background position 40 minus 40 rim and zero after that when i save and refresh 
nothing happened right now over here copy this and then paste right here after that add 50 percent and add 80 percent now copy this background position right here zero zero it returns back to zero zero from minus 40 rim to zero right so when i save and refresh here we have after that over here we are going to add animation delay right here to second now you see here we have right now let me decrease let me increase the animation here we have over here now let me add some text right here let me say educational website after that when i save and refresh here we have a text have been a beautiful animation right here over here now we are going to use this class selector to style the text right here so discount announcement for this background let me use yellow and then let me add some padding from the text in this background image here we have right yep and then over here now let me add margin margin bottom let me say 10 pixels since we need more space between this animated text and this discount announcement right and then over here with fit content right so here we have yep good After that, now let me target this text right here. So to do this, first copy this and paste right here, and then remove this. It's not necessary. After that, we are going to target the text which is found inside the span element right here. So for this text, font size 1.2 rim and color, let me use this black color right here after that when i save and refresh here we have now we have just finished this discount announcement after that what we are going to do is we are going to style this call to action button right here so to do this we have this class selector template btn and an element selector right here Anchor tag A for this display line block padding 0.5 rim from top and bottom and 1.5 rim from left and right. Background we have this color and box shadow we have this shadow color right here. Border radius we use 10 pixel and text transform capitalize and then font size for this call to action button 1.3 so here we are now what we are going to do is over here we are going to increase the font weight for this call to action button right here here we have now over here let me add a hover over effect for this call to action button so to do this we are going to use a pseudo class selector right here which is hover so for this background we have this color color font color we have this and we have a shadow color just like this one now remove this it's not necessary right here after that when i save and refresh here we have now what we are going to do is we are going to add a smooth transition over here so transition 0 0.5 second is here we have 
Now it's called to action button. Now we are going to change the font color as well as the background color right here. We use this color and then for the con and then for the font color it's better to use this color right here and here we have a nice call to action button right here yep all right as you can see from my original website here we have a call to action button right here and here we have the over effect and see more link right here so to create this come over index.html document right here and collapse it outside of this development have a class name content box we are going to create another development have a class name let me say home banner you can assign any class name as you want it's up to you right so inside this development we have just nested a development have a class name let me say home banner text inside this we have font we have an icon on the left side and we have a text on the right side as well as a call to action button or similar link also on the right side You see right here, here we have. So, over here, let me add a text right here. And then separate this using BR tag to start it on new line. Now, change this. After that, now let me find an icon right here. Head over fontawesome.com and find any icons that you interested in. After that, now copy this code snippet right here and come over here and paste right here. After that, when I save and refresh, here we have, right? Now over here, what we are going to do is copy this two more times copy again and here we have so when i save and refresh here is it now what we are going to do is we are going to change the text and also the font icons right here so from here i'm not going to waste your time I'm just going to add it offline, right? All right, welcome back. Here we are. Now, when I save and refresh the web page, here we have. So, this is the HTML part. After that, now let me style this right here. So, to do this, we have position fixed top 30 rim. So from here, here we have the parent element hero container. So for this hero container, it is a parent element right here. So position for this should be relative. And so here we have left five rim display flex align item center justify content space between. So when I save and refresh, here we have, right? Yup. It positions correctly, right? So now again, here we have the hero banner text, hero banner box right here. So using this class selector, let me add some property value pair. Here we have padding. And here we have background color, display flex, justify content, remove this, and remove this gap again. Oh yeah. Here we have background color, and here we have padding from top and bottom, left and right. So, here is it. Now, 
over here let me add a hover over effect of before that let me add justify con content before that let me add a hover over effect right here so when we hover the background color should change into black right here after that now let me style these icons right here so to do this we are going to use this i element selector right here here we have as you can see here we have the icon and the x3 element right here for the x3 here we have some property value pair so when i save and refresh here we have now over here we are going to use this class selector right here and we are going to use display flex align items center justify content space between all right here we have so now let me add some padding between these icons and the text right here so to do this we use gap one rim here we have right now let me style this seymour button right here so for this seymour button we have an anchor element right here so color orange font size 1.2 rim right so when i save and refresh here we have now let me add a hover over effect over this seymour button right here so to do this as always we are going to use a pseudo class selector hover right here and text decoration for this underline so here we have oh yeah we have just created the first home banner right here after that what we are going to do is collapse it head over sweeperjest.com this is the most modern mobile touch slider so head over sweeperjest.com and find pagination right here as you can see here here we have the most modern mobile touch slider right so click over this resource and click over this demo right here and then drag it to the bottom right here as you can see here here we have different navigations paginations pagination progress pagination fraction pagination custom and many more so over here what we are going to do is we are going to make this home page touch slider mobile touch slider right here so to do this over here we have different progress pagination progress so i'm going to use this pagination progress right here so as you can see here here we have the code snippet right here and here we have the development have a class name sweeper wrapper and here we have the development have a class name sweeper as well as my sweeper and so what we are going to do is we are going to copy hero container and then paste three more times right since we need first we are going to paste these three three times right here so here we have right so when i save and refresh here is it right now what we are going to do is first we are going to change the image as well as the text right here 
All right, to do this, I'm not going to waste your time. I have just added it outline, right? Discount announcement. All right, here we have, right? So when I save and refresh, here is it, right? That's it. So now we are going to add pagination over this. As you can see here, here we have a div element have a class name sweeper slide. So you see, we are going to add this sweeper slide class name right here for this div element have a class name hero container. After that, what we are going to do is we are going to copy this class name right here, sweeper wrapper. As you can see here, these div elements are wrapped inside this div element have a class name sweeper wrapper. Again, copy this class name right here and paste right here. Again, this div element have a class name sweeper wrapper is nested inside the div element have a class name sweeper and my sweeper. So when I save and refresh, here we have. Over here, what we are going to do is we are going to copy this sweeper button next and sweeper button preview and also sweeper pagination outside of this development have a class name sweeper wrapper so here we have sweeper pagination so when i save and refresh nothing will happen over here what we are going to do is we are going to copy this sweeper minified sweeper dot css over here so we per bundle minify dot CSS right here. Oh yeah. After that, again, come over here and copy this code snippet right here. Sweeper just right here. And then on the bottom of body tag right here, add this sweeper minified sweeper just call snippet right here. After that, when I save and refresh, here are pagination, pagination next right here. But this is not functional. So to make this functional, we are going to copy this JavaScript code right here. And paste right here. Oh yeah. So, as you can see here, we have my sweeper class selector right here. We are going to access this my sweeper class selector. And then, when I save and refresh, when I click this next button, here we have, and then when I click this previous button, here we have right so congratulations we have just finished the first section for this responsible multi-page educational website which is the home banner section right here over here here we have a section element right here. Now, using this section element, we are going to add some property value pair. So, for this padding, let me say 2% from top and bottom and 5% from left and right. So, when I save and refresh, here we have. Yup, you heard.
Now we are going to create our popular call section right here. So to do this, as always, let me add a comment over here. And then we are going to create a section element having a class name, let me say, call section. Inside this section element, we are going to create a div element having a class name all call station and inside this we are going to create another div element having a class name let me say smart pitch course container or whatever you want so as you can see here we have our popular course and also we have drop down menu on the right side right so over here inside this div element have a class name smart teach we have an h3 element and also we have a paragraph element right here here we have a h3 element and here we have paragraph and then outside of this we are going to have a select element right here Inside this select element, we are going to nest an option element right here. As you can see here, from this original website, we have this our popular course on the left side and this drop down menu on the right side. The major aim for us is to make our web page just like this one so over here let me add an option right here so sort by highest rating sort by most relevant sort by newest and many more so when I save and refresh here we have here is it this is the shimmer part oh yeah you can select from this drop-down menu so now this is a shimmer part now let me style this right here so to do this over here let me add a comment right here and then using this class selector right here all core section let me add prop some property value pair for this display flex align items center Justify content a space between. After that, when I save and refresh, here we have right here. That's it. And now let me style this using this class selector smart teach course right here with for this let me say 60% and copy this again and paste right here for this drop down menu for this select option first over here let me say let me style this h3 element for this h3 element font size let me say 2 Point five rim and padding bottom 10 pixel after that copy this again and paste right here now let me target this span element right here and change the font color so color we use this color secondary text color right here after that when i save and refresh the web page here we have now over here padding zero to rim and three rim after that refresh the web page here is it right now 
copy this and paste right here and now let me target this select element right here so remove this and then select now let me decrease the width for this with 30 percent so here we have right oh yeah over here let me add background color right here and now let me add some padding first let me add some border right here to pixel solid we use this secondary text color after that padding we are going to use for pixel from top and bottom and then pixel from left and right so when i save and refresh here we have right yeah it's good oh yeah now using this class selector let me add a background color right here let me change the background color for this we use a white color so refresh again here we have now collapse it and now outside of this we are going to create a div element have a class name let me say course container so inside this course container we are going to nest our popular course right here so to do this we are going to create a development of a class name feature con feature course inside this we are going to have a call to action pattern having class name let me say template btn which is a reusable class name right here and outside of this we are going to create an image element right here and having a source attribute which is the value for this attribute is the image path or the image directory and then we have an h element and a span element right here and also we have a course rating right here and then inside this course rating inside this development have a class in course rating we have we are going to create span element as well as another development of a class name rating so inside this we are going to add font awesome icons which is star icons right here outside of this again we are going to create a span element right here and then outside of this development have a class name course rating we are going to create another development have a class name course price as you can see from my original website here we have the image right here on the top here we have an h3 element the course title right here and here we have the lecture here we have the instructor name and here we have course rating and we have course price so here we have the course title and here we are going to add the instructor name right here again over here we are going to add this course rating yeah so from here i'm not going to waste your time i've just added it offline so this star icon is found from fontawesome.com simply head over fontawesome.com and find star icons right that is very simple so here we have feature courses and here we have some more buttons so when i save and refresh here we have right here we have the course thumbnail right here here we have the course title and here we have the course rating as well as the course price so now what we are going to do is we are going to copy this 
and paste as much as as you want so i'm going to paste it three times the only thing expected from you and me is to change the course terminal as well as the course title and the course price right and also you can change the rating right oh yeah copy and paste right here it's better to add it offline So when I save and refresh the web page, here we have. Now using this class selector, let me add some property value pair. So over here we have course container class selector for this. We are going to add display flex align items center justify content space between and now we are going to add some padding so gap one rim after that copy this and paste right here now we are going to target this feature course class selector right here so for this feature course let me add some property flex for this flex with one one fifty rim so copy this again and paste right here now we are going to target this image right here with 100% and object feed cover after that when i save and refresh the web page here we have right this is here we have call to action button see more button here we have course title course rating and course price After that, over here, let me add some property value pair for the feature course class selector. So, border to the pixel, text align, center, so here we have and border to pixel solid we use this green color so here we have all right now copy this and paste right here and then what we are going to do is we are going to make this button this call to action button at the center of the course banner so to do this first we are going to make this display none so this call to action button is now gone right here it's not visible right so and then over here let me add Shade. Let's say 50 rim. Then over here add overflow hidden. So over here what we are going to do is we are going to add border right here. So border top 
right radius having the same world radius to the pixel from top and left right here to the pixel which is the same radius for the feature container the feature class right here so here we have now let me decrease this border right here to one pixel now copy this and paste right here and remove this over here what we are going to do is we are going to add hover over effect so to do this as always we are going to use this pseudo class selector hover and then over here transform translate in the y direction by minus 10 pixel right here it's better to say by minus 50 pixel yup after that box shadow we are going to add a shadow color when we hover this box right here the shadow color is right here so we have a shadow color secondary color right here and then we are going to add a smooth transition for this transition then 0 0.5 second is after that save again and refresh the web page here we have as you can see here when i hover over the mouse over this box it transforms to by 50 pixel in the y direction now let me style this h3 which is the course title right here so to do this copy this and paste right here We use a text shadow right here. Zero, zero, forty pixel having this main color right here. So when I save and refresh the web page, here we have, right? We have a nice course title. We have a nice course title. Again, we are going to add text transform, capitalize, and font size. For this course title 1.5 frame after that refresh again here we have over here let me position the call to action button at the center of the course banner so to do this for this template btn position absolute top here we have left 50 percent after that over here transform translate by minus 50 percent right and from the left and by minus 50 percent from the top so here we have right here is it right all right so now copy this and then before that let me here we have right so copy this and paste right here and remove this position remove this again remove this top and then when i hover over this feature course this template meeting translates from minus 50 percent so here we have right Now, let me style this course rating. So, 
So for this display flex justify content center align item also center. So here we have it aligns on the same row, right? Since by default the flex direction is row, right? Then let me style this font icons. So here we have a color right here, dark orange. Now let me style this course price. So to do this, we have this class selector course price. So font size 1.5 frame, color we have green, font weight. We have right here, margin top, 0 pixel. After that, when I save and refresh, here we have, right? After that, now let me style the course price which is found inside this span element right here. So for this, text decoration, line through, font style, italic, padding right, we have right here. So when I save, and refresh here we have the discount cost horse price you see after that now let me style the instructor name right here color we use this gray color and font weight, let me say 500. And then cut and copy over here. So here we have, right? All right, now let me create next and previous button right here as always over here outside of this development have a class name course container let me create a development have a class name page scrolling btn inside this we have span elements right here and again over here we have right arrow we need to have right arrow right here so head over on google search bar and find right arrow the html code for the right arrow so this is the html code for the right arrow right here all right after that, when I save and refresh the web page, here we have. Now, this is the HTML part. Now, let me style this using this class selector, page scrolling BTN. So, here are margin from top 50 pixel and auto from, from left and right and from bottom 0 and text align center. When I save and refresh the web page, here we have, right? This is all right. Now, here we have a span element right here. Now, we have border to pixel solid having main color font size 1.2 rim, and we have text color right here, and we have cursor pointer font weight 700, and also. We have a hover over effect having this background color and having this font color right here. After that, when I save and refresh the web page, all right, here we have, right? This is the next and the previous button right here. Over here, let me decrease the font size for this course title and refresh again. Here we have, right? Oh yeah, that's it. Oh yeah, we have just finished our popular course section right here. That's cool, right? Now, 
we are going to create the recommended section for this responsible multi-page educational website so to do this as always we have just created a section element right here having class name recommend section so here we have the recommend section that we are going to create so to create this we have an extra element and over here again we are going to create a class a development have a class name let me say recommend section and then we are going to nest this link inside the span element right here so now over here for the first recommended link we have python we have data science and again we are going to add more links right here machine learning so from here i'm not going to waste your time right here i am going to add it offline so welcome back here we have all right python that science machine learning so how is this when i save and refresh here we have topics recommended for you and here we have the link right here all right now let me style this so to style this first we are going to use this class name right here recommended section so using this class name recommended section let me add some property value pair so for this recommend section and now we are going to target this h element right here for this font size to rim padding bottom here we have after that when i save and refresh here we have right over here what we are going to do is we are going to add a background color for this recommend section so when i save and refresh here we have this h3 and this recommended link are visible right so now again using this class selector recommended link let me add some property value pair but before that using this selector before let me add content empty position relative let me add a horizontal line so for this with 10 percent height for pixel over here recommended and position absolute so when i save and refresh here we have the horizontal line right here all right now let me style right here recommend link display flex align item center justify content space between and gap let me say 1.2 rim flex wrap wrap background color crimson so when i save and refresh the web page here we have a recommended link having a nice background color right here now using this span element selector right here let me add the width so for this flex one one let me say teal green and background dark orange we have a shadow color right here we have padding 10 pixel text line center and then refresh the web page here we have <coughs> here is it right after that now let me add a hover over fit over here so transform translate in the y direction by minus 10 pixel and background we have background color having a ring gpa color code and box shadow we have a shadow color right here after that over here let me add the font color right here so font color white 
and then when I save and refresh the web page, here we have right over here. Copy this and then paste right here. After that, we have an anchor element. So now we are going to target this anchor element right here. And over here, we are going to change the text color right here to white. So when I hover over this span element, then the text color should change into white, right? So save and refresh. Here we have, right? Oh yeah, that's it. Now, let me change the color for this anchor element. So color, dark, point weight, remove it, font size 1.2 rim and transition 0 0.5 second. Again, remove it. It's not necessary, right? So when I save and refresh the web page, here we have, right? That's it. Oh yeah, we have just finished this recommended section right here. Now we are going to create why choose a section. As you can see here, here is the section that we are going to create right now in this video. First, let me collapse it and then, as always, let me add a comment right here. So, over here, we are going to create a section element having a class name, let me say, choose as section. Inside this section element, we have an H3 element and we have a paragraph element right here. We have a text right here and we have this paragraph right here. So, copy this and then come over here and paste right here. And again, copy this. And paste right here. All right. Again, now we have three boxes, three content boxes. So, to create this content box, first we are going to surround these three div elements inside a single row. Here we have. So, over here we have choose as container. Inside this container, we are going to create choose as box. So, over here, I'm not going to waste your time. I have just added it offline, right? So, here we have. All right. So, this is the first content. And now, when I save and refresh the web page, here we have, right? Here is it. Now, what we are going to do is, we are going to copy this and then paste two more times. All right, after that, save again and refresh. Here we have. Now, what we are going to do is, we are going to change these icons and the text right here. So it's better to add it offline. Oh yeah, welcome back, here we have. You see, this 3 div element is surrounded, nested inside a single row, which is a div element having a class name, choose as container. So here we have. Oh yeah. And then save and refresh the web page here is this this is the html part now let me style now let me style 
this HTML document. So to do this using this class selector, choose a section. Let me add a background color, right? First, what we are going to do is over here we are going to write a comment right here. And then using this class selector, background, background color, let me use RGB color right here. Then select the color code right here. After that, when I save and refresh the web page, here we have a nice background color, right? All right, again, now let me style this H3, the document, the text which is found inside this H3 element. So to do this, we are going to use a pseudo class selector. So here we have. Over here again, we are going to style the paragraph. So for this color, we are going to use dark slate gray. Copy this again, and then paste right here. First, over here, we are going to add text align center. And paste right here, remove this paragraph, and now let me style it separately. For this font size, let me say to rim. It's better to say to rim. And then padding bottom, let me say padding bottom instead of party bottom it's better to say padding 50 pixel so when i save and refresh the web page here we have and then now we are going to target this choose as container so it's better to remove this and then choose as container for this display flex align items center justify content a space between we are going to make this on the same row right then the gap between the two content should be one ring after that when i save and refresh the web page here we have yep then copy this and then paste right here after that remove this and then now we are going to use this class selector as you can see here we have four developments having the same class name choose as books so the flex so here we have the width 70 ring and then background we use white color as a background color right and then padding 40 pixel from top and bottom and 30 pixel from left and right and then text align center after that when i save and refresh the web page here we have now copy this and then paste right here after that now let me target these icons so i and remove it now font color we use first we say font size 1.5 cream and font color green gold so here we have now over here instead of font it is it is font size right so font size here is it after that when i save and refresh the web page here we have now copy this and paste right here after that now we are going to target this h4 element so h4 
so we have color right here we have font size right here to ring one point to ring so when I save and refresh here we have now padding 10 pixel right and refresh before that over here we are going to add padding margin top then one ring after that when I save and refresh, here we have. Now let me increase this margin top to two rim. Here we have, right? So over here, now let me add a call to action pattern. As always, we are going to use the template BTN class selector right here, which is real table class name to style the call to action button right after that save so over here choose as container then template btn so my region five frame and auto from top and bottom five frame and frame from left and right auto text align center after that when i save and refresh the web page here we have a beautiful call to action button at the center of this container right yep now we have just finished this why choose a section well in the coming episode we are going to create this new call section so to create this section first we are going to collapse it and then as always let me add a comment over here now remove this copy this and then down here paste right here now remove this or change this text right here and then remove this select option it's not necessary right So over here, now let me change the text and the image banner right here. Now let me change this course title right here, as well as the image banner or the image, the course thumbnail. The course banner or the course thumbnail, right? Everything is similar to that of our popular section so we we don't need any complex cases we don't we don't need to use any complex cases the only thing expected from you and me is to change the text the course title as well as the course thumbnail right you can also change the rating and many more and also you can change the instructor name as well right so when i save and refresh the web page here we have it seems like a little bit boring right 
So over here we made a mistake. You see? So remove this and then collapse again. After that, copy and paste and add for right here. So when I save and refresh again, here we have, you see, here is it, right? Now, let me style this text right here, smart using this class name. First, let me change the title for this course, the ultimate no-case course from zero to hero, and then We have this, a three and paragraph. So using this class selector, let me add some property value pair. First, remove this, it's not necessary, right? I remove this again, and then I remove this again and so when i save and refresh the web page here we have all right Now, we have Smart Teach Course H3, so for this, here we have the paragraph, so copy this and paste right here, and then we are going to target the paragraph. So for the paragraph, remove this font size and part important. And instead of 2.5 rim, it's better to say 1.3 and padding bottom and instead it's better to say one rim. All right, after that, over here, color, we are going to use this hexadecimal color code. After that, when I save and refresh the web page, here we have, oh yeah, we have just completed this new course section right here. You see? Awesome. So now we are going to create the newsletter section. As always, let me add a comment right here. After that, we are going to create a section element having class name newsletter section. Inside this section element, we are going to create a div element having class name newsletter container. Inside this, we have text on the left side. Inside this section element, we have input field on the right side and we have some text in the left side so we have newsletter container as well as we have form input box so inside this newsletter container we have a three element and it's part element 
and then inside this form inside the development have a class name for input box we are going to create an input field right here having the value for this type of the value for the type attribute right here is email right and then class let me say pointer input and placeholder enter your email here again we have button right here sign up button and now we are going to add a class name right here let me say use btn you can assign any class name as you want right so here we have the text found inside the left side of the newsletter container right here we have now this is the HTML part so over here as always let me add a command so using this class selector newsletter container so for this display flex align items center justify content then we are going to use justify content a space between a space evenly is better to say space evenly right after that gap we are going to make a gap between these two container should be it's better to say 2.5 trim 2.5 times 60 pixel after that when i save and refresh the web page here we have right oh over here we have just made a mistake right So as you can see here, we have a newsletter section. So instead of newsletter container, it's better to say this newsletter newsletter section. So copy everything and then paste right here. You see, that's it. For this, we are going to make the width for this newsletter container. It should be 60% width should be let me say 60 percent right it's better to say 60 percent after that when i save and refresh here we have right that's good now over here we are going to add a background color so to do this having a little guardian background color so to do this we use this CSS property which is background image so background image having linear gradient then to right or to left or to bottom or to top right so in this case i'm going to use the color speed from right to left so the first color red and the second color green so this color is speed from right to left and then for the h3 element first let me change the color right here we use rgb color code and then for this again we use rgb color code right here and then when i save and refresh you have R do you see over here the color is spread from right to left you see all right here we have so here is it now let me style this span the text which is found inside this span element right here so for this point size 1.2 real and the last color we use this bg color right here 
After that, when I save and refresh, here we have. Yep. Now, let me start this input field. So, we have pointer input class selector right here with, for this, we have this person. After that, when I save and refresh, here we have. Now, over here, we have pointer input class selector. So, here we have some property, some property value pair, pointer input, and for the button, after that, when I save and refresh, yep, a little bit better. So, over here, with H percent, and remove this, remove again this, After that, pointer input here we have. Here we have four button and four pointer input. Here we have the style for the pointer input and here we have the style for the button, right? We have padding right here. And we have region and we have background and outline. So when I save and refresh, here we have. All right. Now over here. Here we have placeholder right here and for the button. We have color for the placeholder and refresh again. Here we have the placeholder text and then over here, here we have some property value pair for the button, right? For the sign up button, right? Margin left zero outline none. And background color also here we have the color also. Here we have secondary color and then border radius from top and from bottom, here we have the left, the right side for the radius, here we have. Now, over here, we are going to add cursor for enter, and then we are going to add a smooth transition. For this, we are going to use transition 0 0.5 second is in. 